Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about making alien world bases. So this is uh, really fun. This is you've got let's say some sci-fi army and you want to set it on a far off imaginary world. Well, today we're going to make a fun alien world base. And one of the fun things about doing this is that it's really more about the paint and the colors than it is about the geography. So, uh, right now I'm just, I've got a nice little uh, 40 mil base here. And I'm laying down some cork just to give me a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a little bit of verticality, I guess we'd say. And so, gluing that down, letting that set. Now I'm getting out various types of basing paste. Now here I'm using some Vallejo sandy basing paste. I'll, I'll talk about you know each of these as I, as I use them. But one of the keys to an alien biome is you want the environment to feel a little weird. So I've used a sand basing paste here. Now I've got some Martian iron earth, which is a crackle paint from, uh, from Citadel, from GW. But of course you can use, you know, there's all sorts of different crackle type basing paste out there. You can use any of them. So now I'm putting some of that over the top. You'll notice I'm, they're getting all kind of mixed up and weird in, in each other's business. And I'm just slapping down goop on this base. That's all it is. Now we're going to take some Sterling Battlemire, which is just a heavy, thick, high grit mud. Again, you could use a Vallejo one. You could mix your own from, you know, dirt from your yard. The key with it is you want to have different types of environments here it'll feel more strange and kind of off-putting and alien if there's lots of different textures within all the small amount of space so it's not a readily identifiable earth biome okay so that's why i've kind of mixed all three of these together so it looks just a little bit weirder it's a little more visually interesting and it's just all in all cooler you can do this by the way on other bases even for your people who are on more traditional earth-like worlds but whatever so now I'm just putting some rocks in to break up the texture even more and kind of cross them together. So easy peasy. Uh, and that basically is that. Now I set that to the side and we're going to let that dry for a little while. All right, so full honesty here. Uh, I painted this whole base and got this all done and then realized that the middle part here where I was laying down the inks didn't record. So I had to go back paint the whole base white and then shoot this that's why there's suddenly plants on here as is the little things glued down so i apologize i'll explain what i did one of the keys to an alien base is alien flora or fauna now the fauna is generally going to be your mini you're not generally going to have room to put other animals and stuff on there and the other thing is color so i wanted to make a little alien plant to make that little alien tentacle plant, I went into my bits box and I grabbed three Skaven tails, uh, Skaven from Games Workshop. And I just glued them down in a little format where they looked like angry tentacles coming up out of the ground. Perfect little plant. And that's my point. You can use lots of natural organic bits like that to make odd looking weird plants. The next step is obviously the colors. So here I have a purple ink, a turquoise ink, and a magenta ink, okay? And you notice I'm working very wet on wet with these. Just splashing it around. It's going to run more in the details with these with those big chunks that came out. I'm just putting a little white back on, and then I'll blend that back in. But um, you notice I just literally took a nice fat brush and started splashing that paint all over it. Okay? You can see how, because they're wet, I can work right on top of the other one, bring them together, make lots of weird, interesting color transitions happen, but working in these sort of synth wave alien colors, like a bright electric blue. Again, I'm using Dalarowney FW inks. There's nothing magical about the particular ones I'm using. You can use anything you want. You could use paint. You could use contrast stuff. The key is use unusual colors. It will fit as long as you have some kind of visual cue. I have the little plant, the little tentacle plant, as one of those. You notice the little plants are gone now, the flora that I had, because we're back to the original footage. So... I have an alien looking skull. I think that's like a Tau skull or something. I let all those inks dry. And then I came back in and I'm going to do a quick dry brush to pick out all of those, uh, all the raised areas, add some more differentiation. The key is alien skull, alien plant, 
alien colors, and then when I actually put the little tiny tufts on, I'm using alien world tufts, which are, again, dark blue and neon fluorescent pink. So everything is working together here to make it feel like, whoa, we are not anywhere near Earth. This is not a world that I recognize. Okay. Again, you could do this in completely different colors. You could have like a bright green mixed with a bright blue. That would be weird. You could have like really shock orange mixed in with some pink and yellow to make it feel like kind of a tequila sunrise thing. All sorts of different colors you could use. Now, after the, what I'm trying to do here is, even though I worked wet on wet and I blended a bunch of stuff together, the dry brush is gonna naturally desaturate everything, add more texture. Now I'm adding a little bit of shading. So I'm going back in with a purple wash. So this is just some traditional like druchy violet type of stuff. And I'm just kind of working it around in some of the deeper areas. Uh, I'm working more with the magenta and the purple ink on the little tentacle plant. Uh, just making sure that all of my colors are, again, have some interesting little hints as they get into each other. Now, one point I'll make if you're working with inks like I am here that's really important to understand is that uh, they dry quite glossy. You will need to mat this down. You don't want to have your bases being all shiny and weird. Uh, that's just going to clash in a weird way and make light look unusual. So mat this all out after you're done. It's just, it's just the necessary thing to do. I know we, we're, you might say, but Vince, what if the rocks are shiny? Well, then you wouldn't dry brush white on top of them to pick them out because those would be the things reflecting the most and you're going to get shine where you don't want shine in the lower lights, not in the upper lights. That's the problem with shiny stuff. Okay, back to me finishing this off. So again, just working that purple wash in over and over again. You notice I'm shoving the purple wash at the elevation changes under the tentacle plant, on the sides of the skull, creating separation of the various elements in the base. So there we go, that's all dry. And you can see now that that looks uh, pretty nice, pretty solid, easy to work with there. We've got, we've got some nice color, it looks very alien. Now it's time to actually put those plants on you saw a little while ago. These are from Gamers Grass. Uh, I absolutely love them. I mean, look at those things, look at that fantastic synth wave alien grass. You cannot go wrong with these. They have a bunch of different colors, by the way, of, of all this stuff, as well as, of course, normal biome, uh, more earthly biome tufts as well. Uh, and so now what I'm doing is just gluing them down and making sure that they're all in place. Uh, now I did this after I painted this time because I loved the natural color of these and thought they would actually fit really well on this base. Uh, just using some tweezers to work them in place. You notice that I spread the tuft out after I push it down. So like after I push it down to the glue, I take the tweezers and I'm literally pushing the tips of it back out, spreading it, making sure it's nice and sort of looking like a, an unfurled plant, right? Uh, so we don't want to, uh, we don't want to make it. So they, you, sometimes tufts when you glue them down, they can get weird shapes. You want them to be unfurled and uh, look like a fully open exposed plant in the wind. Okay, now, and then just um, quickly putting a little drop on to accelerate their glue and we're good to go. One final little step. As always, we never have unpainted elements on our base. So I put a little bit of purple wash around the bottom of them. And then I do a little very light dry brush of white over the top of the plants just to get a little bit of light catching the edge of those thin strands of the plant. It makes them feel much more like part of it. They're then highlighted in the same way as the rocks and everything's all set to go. So there you go. This is a really fast, fun, easy process. There's nothing complicated in here. I think these bases look fantastic. I really love how this came out. Um, and it gives you a great chance to play with unusual colors and to make your army really stand apart. So there you go. If you liked that, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions, drop them below. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.